update on Hurricane Laura now. Hurricane Laura now by the NHC and potentially a major hurricane as this gets close to the Gulf. In this video, I'm going to talk about track, timing, location, and some other important details in an educational format. So if you like educational detailed videos, I invite you to subscribe below and also comment below and ask any questions or have any comments, get some conversation started related to the hurricane here. So this is as of Tuesday afternoon and evening here. We're looking at Hurricane Laura here, and you can see that there is, this is the infrared. You can see some spiraling now getting worked into this thing. It's starting to get a more organized look. This could rapidly change over the next 24 hours with eyewall potential, and I'll go over that in a second with a beautiful model animation we'll show you here in a second. But you can see this convection a little bit, a bit of break right now, but there is a lot of convection here on the southern end. Now, if you look at the actual visible satellite, you can see that spiraling much more detailed with the, the visible look. You can see it a lot better here and lots of moisture and convection on the southern end. There's a little bit of dry air up to the north, but the southern end of this thing is very, very potent. And you can see that dry air just up to the north. There's also a trough up here sitting in Texas and a ridge out here. And what that's going to do is drive this hurricane. So this ridging, this hurricane is going to kind of go over the ridging. So there's going to be a key point here in the next 24 hours or so where this hurricane, instead of moving west, it starts to turn and make a turn to the north pretty rapidly. If this happens any sooner, it will put Texas under the gun. If it happens any later, it puts Louisiana under the gun. At the moment, it appears that it's going to affect the southeast portion of Texas in Louisiana and that's kind of where the NHC had it although I wouldn't be surprised to see it just a little bit off to the west of the NHC's track now like I said your official source of weather information should always be the NHC the National Hurricane Center so please check them out on a regular basis they forecast and put updates out uh, continuously but what we want to look at here is this ridging Okay, so it's going to move around the ridging and this troughing up here, this trough actually creates wind shear and can stretch the hurricane out and that will weaken the hurricane just a bit. So the uh, location of this will be critical and we'll go over that in a second. Now the actual sea surface temperatures, Laura's sitting out here, but it's moving to the northwest. What's that mean? Well, we got all open water. There's no land interaction, very warm waters out there and that is supportive of hurricane development. The temperatures are above average here in the western Gulf with temperatures as much as 0.4 to maybe even a degree above average in some areas. Very, very warm waters. You can see a little bit of a cooler air up there. Excuse me, cooler sea surface temperatures. And that could be due to Marco. And you can see it here with the ocean heat content. The energy that these hurricanes have to work with, it's, it's less out here. And that's kind of due to Marco raining and, and cooling off the ocean. But it is warmer and much more potent out here in the Western Gulf, and that's where uh, Laura is going to be moving into. The NHC has a track, before we show you the models at uh, early Tuesday afternoon here, they got this thing tracking right up into the Louisiana-Texas border. And you can see that M right there, that stands for major hurricane. So that would be a category three or greater where that M is located. The H is stand for hurricane and the S a tropical storm. So this could be a tropical storm all the way out to Arkansas, but the greatest threat is going to be right near that Texas Louisiana border. Tropical storm force potential, obviously 90% chance or greater within that Louisiana, Texas uh, area. And then as you get towards Arkansas, much of Louisiana into Eastern Texas, a 50% chance or greater and slight chance behind that. But again, I would not be surprised with the current trends this, to move just slightly to the West, as I mentioned yesterday on my video as well. Here's the track by the ECMWF. This is the European Kapir model. It is one of the more reliable models for hurricanes. And you can see the track here is much off to the west of what the NHC had. But it does affect, I mean, there, there are some model plots that do go into Louisiana and then some to the south. But overall, it is affecting the southeast portion of Texas, according to the European. Now, if you look at the GFS, the GFS is much closer to the border of Texas, Louisiana, but still just off to the west. There has been a trend to the west. I want to keep that in mind 
and the low has been initializing you know, 20 or more miles to the west of that ridge, that could be moving this just to, to, just to the west over the next 24 hours. Here's the track intensity guidance, and you can see the more intense models up there in the wind speed criteria, and you can see some models have this peaking out at a category three, maybe even a category four, and then some models have this at tropical storm uh, potential. This is the, you know, this is going to be in the next 36 to 48 hours, but most models converging around that two to three period. Again, I mentioned that in my forecast video yesterday. I thought it'd be around a two, but perhaps a three. But looking like for a brief period, we could get a category three hurricane uh, for that Texas, Louisiana area. Now, there are a couple of things we want to watch. Here's the wind shear. This is as of right now. This is our low pressure or hurricane. A little bit of a northerly shear component, but there's not a whole lot of shear out here. And again, remember what I said, shears stretch out hurricanes. You can think of a hurricane as a column. And if the winds are stronger aloft, which is essentially what our shear is indicating, that will stretch that column kind of horizontally and flat, and that can kind of stretch the hurricane out, and it loses its spiral, its intensity. But as we go into the day here on Wednesday, Wednesday morning or so, you can see that there's a little bit of shear that kind of redevelops here, moderate shear, that could uh, briefly interact with the hurricane, but... As we get later into the day on Wednesday, you can see that it's wide open now. Not a whole lot of shear around this system. Again, that with that trough to the north, there is shear. And that's something we're going to have to watch, but it should remain just north of the coastline. Once this enters the shore, this hurricane will interact with that tr uh, shear, that trough, and that will weaken things and eventually turn it into an extra tropical cyclone. But uh, there's going to be a very, very close call if that shear remains weak and aligned you know in a in a parallel unidirectional uh, type of look in the soundings that could really increase the hurricane potential briefly as it gets near the louisiana texas border so really it's looking like the ingredients will maximize kind of within this area right here and when that happens that could shoot up to category three what we're going to look at now is an actual animation, and I'll show you this animation in a second, but this is the NAM computer model, the actual wind speeds. And you can see the NAM is actually pretty weak with the wind speeds. This is as of Thursday in the morning around 1 a.m., and you can see wind speeds, generally speaking, 80 to 90 miles an hour, so kind of a weaker category, one or so hurricane. And then you look at the GFS, and the GFS is much stronger, and it's really in the same location, uh, maybe a little bit to the northeast, but you can see wind speeds actually are peaking closer to 100 or so, closer to Category 2 via the GFS. And then we look at the, uh, the HMON, and we'll look at the, uh, the HWRF, and this is actually a pretty good model as well, and it's been a little bit more farther to the west. This is as of right now, and this is the wind speeds again. And as you can see, as we move into the southeast portions of Texas, you can see how it blows up just as it gets right towards Texas, right where those warm waters, the weak shear, and uh, the moisture really is the most optimized. Right around here, between around Wednesday afternoon into Thursday morning, that's going to be our best bet here for the strengthening of this hurricane and you can see some areas here the wind speeds are maxing out I mean, darn near a category four or five here okay so 120 130 maybe 150 miles an hour by the w or the hrwf now the european has been one of the more accurate models so i think something in between that what this shows in the gfs but the track of this thing looks uh, pretty uh accurate um and you can see it's just to the west of what the nhc says but i'm really thinking the southeast portion of texas is going to be under the gun with this particular system again the hrwf moves it up just to the west of the border again as a category four maybe even a five but like i said i think category three is uh the most likely scenario at the moment so that's the hrwf in terms of the actual infrared reflectivity, this is right now, and it looks kind of similar to what we're looking at. We had that spiral 
kind of effect, a little bit of dry air on that southwest side and also north. But watch what happens over the next 24 hours as we get towards Wednesday. Rapid strengthening. You see a period where it's really strengthens and you get an eye wall. This is around Wednesday at uh, Wednesday morning. So not too far from now, we could be dealing with rapid intensification. And as this moves to the northeast, it looks like a powerhouse hurricane as this moves into close to Texas and Louisiana. This is the GFS simulated infrared reflectivity, and it really hits right along that border. So that's kind of how the hurricane could look, according to the satellite on the GFS. In terms of the tornado potential, the thing you want to watch for on the east side of these things, or the, yeah, the east side, the top right quarter in particular is tornado potential anything above the green right here which is a one indicates at least slight tornado potential and this is thursday morning now as we get towards thursday around lunch when this thing gets on shore there could be some isolated tornado activity in southern central and even northern louisiana with this type of system so the right side of these systems are typically the most dangerous side so even though the track moves into texas Louisiana still could experience some significant storm surge and then obviously the tornado threat, a slight to moderate tornado threat here in much of Louisiana with this significant tornado parameter that we're looking at and maybe even up into parts of Arkansas into the day on Thursday. So that's our tornado par parameter. In terms of the moisture, we'll look at this real quick and then we'll look at precipitation amounts. This is as of right now and you can see that dry air I was talking about just to the north a little bit of dry air out here but that starts to disintegrate as we get towards wednesday and thursday this is uh going to be wednesday morning and right around wednesday afternoon and evening there that moisture kind of really starts to increase on all sides all cylinders of this hurricane and that does uh, look pretty optimal as it moves into the day on thursday into that texas louisiana region okay so in terms of the actual moisture and the precipitation amounts, this is the 72-hour GFS rainfall amounts. The uh, 6 to 10 inch range is kind of right along that eye wall of that hurricane. And then just to the east, there is a more widespread area of 2 to 4 inches or so of rain. But where that eye wall hits and just to the east, I think you're going to see somewhere between 6 and 10 inches of rain. Again, not astronomical but definitely some significant rainfall. And as this moves to the northeast on the day Friday, you can see a widespread swath of one to three inches or so, all the way out to Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, um, and Arkansas as well, and maybe even Missouri. So really the main threat with this is going to be that wind and that surge, and then that tornado potential in Louisiana and maybe even southern Arkansas. So those are the two main potentials. Luckily, this does not seem like a extreme flooding event like Harvey was, remember a couple of years ago in Texas, uh, this will be a little bit faster moving. So that is good news on that front. But again, stay safe, everyone. Again, follow the NHC for your official updates on that track we were talking about. And they produce tracks every uh, few hours and stuff. Our channel is more the educational, the extra details, the dessert from these forecasts. So again, if you found this Useful, helpful. If you enjoyed this video, share this with a friend. Subscribe below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe here if you're in that area. We'll be posting more updates in the future. And see you soon, guys.